Thank you, Daniela. Time now for the headliner brought to you by Miller Lite. And let's bring in our guest, the director of scouting for TSN. No stranger to the old podcast, the Red and White Authority. And we're so happy to have on the headliner, uh, Craig Button. Uh, Craig, uh, thanks for doing this. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. You know that. I could talk to you for days upon days (laughs) upon days. (laughs) <laughs> and, and I feel exactly the same way, Art. And, and it's not just about uh, the Red Wings. We could talk about so many things, uh, uh, Michigan, football, hockey, basketball, everything that goes with the Wolverines. And I also see that uh, album cover of Sinatra in your background. Best concert I ever saw with my mother. I was 14 years old. Really? Really? You saw, Frank, you know, it, it's interesting. My parents really like Sinatra, but D. Martin, Perry Como, Nat King Cole. So I grew up, I was really small, but I grew up on all that stuff. Yeah, you know, you've always had good taste, Greg. Always. So uh, I'm not surprised you would notice. <laughs> Thanks. Away. The chairman of the board, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, so let's, let's get into the draft. And, and I really want to ask you, I was really looking forward to seeing you in Ann Arbor and, and in, uh, in Plymouth for the U18s. How significantly has COVID-19 impacted this draft or was a lot of the legwork pretty much done by the time everything went on pause? Uh, What I would say, Art, is a lot of the legwork up until that point in time was done. I mean, there's no laggards uh, in NHL scouting circles. Everybody's putting in the time and making sure that they're watching the players and uh, ensuring that they are where they need to be. But those are important times for evaluation for all teams, you know, down the stretch, into the playoffs, whether it be the NCAA playoffs, whether it be the junior playoffs in in North America and in Europe, as well as the uh, World Under-18 Championships, which is truly a best on best for all the with the vast majority of players being available. Uh, You know, the players miss out on, you know, uh, giving themselves the opportunity to to show more of what they're capable of. And all the NHL teams have missed that opportunity too. W- what I would say to that then is, is that everybody's dealing, uh, you know, with the same exact type of scenario, which, you know, you want to give yourself the, the most confidence uh, when you're going into uh, to select players in the amateur draft. But Nobody's going to have a leg up on anybody else with respect to seeing those players play in those situations because everybody got affected in the exact same manner. How much, uh, I, I guess what I'm curious to look at is when you see the, how much impact will this have on these individual players? I guess a guy like, a, like Lafreniere, regardless of when next season starts and regardless of what team gets him, you know, hopefully a team wearing red and white, or I guess red and black, probably Ottawa. But aside from that, uh, he's going to make – do you think he is that good where he's absolutely going to make the NHL next season? I have no doubt about it whatsoever. And not only make the NHL, contribute at the NHL level. I think he's capable of 60 or more points as as a rookie. That's how good he is. I mean, if you look at his resume over his three seasons playing junior hockey – all he's done is excel. All he's done is do things that the, the very few players have ever done. 16-year-old rookie in the Quebec League, first one to score 40 or more goals as a 16-year-old since Sidney Crosby. Goes to the under-18 tournament, was a dominant player as an underage. That summer, the Holinka Gretzky MVP gold medal performance for the ages. You know, then he becomes the CHL Player of the Year uh, after the 2018-2019 season. We know what he did at the World Junior Tournament. All he has done is excel, and and I think that not only is he capable of playing in the NHL, I think he's capable of being a very good contributor in his rookie season. He he he's that good. Uh, art as a player well i'm just hoping then they adopt this uh this new draft policy uh before we get into some of the other players i want to talk to you about uh i I, i'm really kind of curious when you when you look at the red wings and you look at their needs and you look at steve's first year uh you know your mini state of the red wings i mean i i would imagine regardless of where they are in the draft i think steve's going to probably look for goal scoring he needs guys who can put the puck in the net uh, on a more consistent basis, obviously Lafreniere is one of those guys. Uh, that would look really, really good, Craig. You got me all fired up. But uh, you know, the Red Wings needs, and how do you think they're going to address the draft? 
Well, I, like, where do you find high end skill? And, and when you talk about goal scoring, the best offensive players, the best goal scoring, dynamic offensive defensemen, it's always at the top part of the draft. So, you know, it, it's a great opportunity for the Red Wings to acquire a player that can come in and be a mass, like a significant difference maker. There is. Uh, uh, you have to make the distinction between having prospects that are good NHL prospects that can contribute and be good, solid players, and then the difference makers. And when you're picking in the top part of the draft, that's where you find the difference makers. That's where you can uh, acquire those players that, you know, really not only not only be, become the foundation of your organization, but they ease some of the burden and the pressure on some of those other players that allows them to just settle in and be the players that they're capable of being. Nothing worse than when you ask younger players to go and try to do more than they're capable of doing because the NHL is the best league in the planet. It, it's a really difficult league to have success in. And when you're young and you're trying to find your way, and not only that, you're being asked to do more than you're capable of, it almost becomes an impossible task. Not that it's impossible, but you're asking a lot. When you get the top end players that can come in and, and make those contributions, I, I think it just filters and, and just goes, it, it just works all the way through your team and your organization. And that's how you build a championship team. And that's the opportunity that the Red Wings have. Uh, with that said, Craig, let's get into some of these other players, get your quick assessment. We talked about Lafreniere. I know Joe Valeno is really tight with him, very close, another high-end uh, draft pick for the Red Wings. And he says what makes Alexi great is not only his skill, but the type of teammate and the type of individual that he really is, that when he walks into a room, you're getting a good character person. Yeah, and, and you know, Joey, who's played against them and played with them, you know, has a really good feel for that and understands that. And I couldn't agree with Joe more than uh, any more than what he said. The other thing I'll add about Alexi Lafreniere, when you're a top player and, and you know you're a top player, you're expected to perform like a top player. And never have I seen Alexi Lafreniere shy away from those expectations. Further to that, Never have I seen him not rise to those uh, challenges and to those situations and deliver. And I think that it's great to have skill. It's great to have, you know, the, the great determination and competitive spirit. But to know that you're looked upon as the go-to guy and to know that the challenges will only become that much more significant as you move along in the, in the course of your season and, and depending on what teams you're playing for with respect to events and, know, and, and then knowing that player is going to deliver, that's what you get in Alexi Lafreniere. I'll tell you what, you know, Craig, we can go on about Alexi forever. I mean, if if, if my church, local church was <laughs> yeah. open, I'd be uh, right up the I'd be lighting some <laughs> candles, boy. Just get this guy. Anyway, it's got to be a Red Wing. With that said, let's go to a guy that, you know, he's really risen up the charts. And I think that everyone, in at least in Red Wing land, is very familiar with the Mannheim team because of Mo Sider, last year's pick. But that's Tim Stutzla. Uh, or Stutzla, you know, who really has kind of emerged here as maybe he himself I may not be Lafreniere, but boy, he's a pretty darn good player. He, he really is. So what needs to happen is, is you can have Joey Valeno talk about Lafreniere. Well, you need Mo Sider to talk about Tim Stutzla. And, you know, when you, when yeah. you consider Stutzla as a 16 year old, he really showed like you, you he opened up eyes and he said, "Whoa, we better pay attention to this player. And, and I'll tell you what, he, he's got a mind for the game and creativity and, and imagination that reminds me so much of Patrick Kane. But it, it's this about him that really gets me excited. I mean, you got to have the skill to be talked about in the top part of the draft. But for me, what, mm -hmm. what Stutzla does is rare. He doesn't wait to see what the game is going to offer to him. He says to the game, I'm putting my hands on this game. I'm going to put my stamp on it. He's not waiting to, to, to see how it unfolds. He is going after it. He is grabbing the game by the scruff of its neck. Very few players have that quality. And, you know, one of the players that did that, I mean, the top players have always done that. 
But, you know, when I think about players like that, it, 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 it's players like Peter Forsberg. You know what? There was, there was going right. to be uh, the game when the puck drops. Here, you better deal with me. And I think, and, and he's not the only one. Peter comes to mind. There's so many other top quality, great players. And I think that Stutzla, with the skill and with that type of mentality, you know, he, he, he's really a terrific player. You know, certainly uh, Stutzla can play center, but a true center, a guy who is a, you know, a, a behemoth in a way, a big kid, uh, pretty young though for, you know, for, I think he's one of the youngest players in the draft this year, Quinton Byfield. What can you tell us about him? You know, he kind of did what, what Joey Valeno went through last year in the world juniors. He kind of went through this year on team Canada, even though they wore a good, you know, gold medal. It's kind of an 18, 19 year old tournament. He was younger, but he is you know, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be difficult for Steve to or the Red Wings to look at this and think, gosh, big center. We need a center. Uh, top line guy. Is Quentin Byfield that guy, perhaps? Well, I, I don't have any doubt that he's the number one center and can have a significant impact in the National Hockey League. I mean, if, if you want to look like for me, when I watch Quentin Byfield, I mean, you can make the comparisons, the way he handles the puck to Evgeny Malkin, you know, his determination to play everywhere in, on the rink, like Anze Kopitar. And so when I look at Quentin and, and I look at a range, I say, OK, I'm comparing him to Evgeny Malkin and Anze Kopitar champions winners hall of famers and at the very least i think he would be at, at the very least he'd be sean couturier well that, is there any downside in having sean couturier on your team i would say absolutely not no. so no. the thing with the thing with quinton as you point out about being a young player i still believe that quinton is finding out how good a player he can be he's got skill but th that that confidence that comes with you know achieving and, and and being a significant contributor and knowing that it's not just that I can, that I will. It, it, he can oppose himself. But I think that's part of the maturation process for Quentin Byfield. Art, I've said this, and I will continue to say this. I think if Quentin, if, if the team that drafts Quentin Byfield uh, in, the, in the 2020 draft puts him in the NHL, I think it'll be a big mistake. I think he needs another year of finding out how dominant he can be and being a significant, significant contributor, a dominant player uh, with the Sudbury Wolves. And, and, and I think that's imperative for his development. I think you have to be patient with him. Could he play in the NHL? Yeah, but I differentiate between playing and contributing. And if you want the best out of Quinton, and you make the point about the World Junior Championship, he, he wasn't ready for that. It's not that he doesn't have the skill or the potential. It's just that he wasn't ready, and I feel the same way about the NHL for the 2020-2021 season. Well, the Red Wings have uh, six picks in the in the first three rounds, uh, uh, three second rounders. I think everyone's looking forward to that. Obviously, Steve's made his mark with some late draft picks or not the number one first round. He's gotten a lot of great players in the second and third round, too. Craig, you know, what's the old showbiz expression? Always leave them wanting for more, wanting more. Uh, that's what we're going to have to do, unfortunately. Uh, uh, we have run out of time, uh, but I really, really want to thank you. You know, not only do I appreciate your insight, but I appreciate our friendship. We go back a long, long way, uh, you know, to back to the days in Ann Arbor, watching Michigan's football team up in the press box. So uh, thank you. We're going to have to have you on again, certainly. Uh, and uh, I always appreciate it. Uh, I'm glad everyone's safe and you just take care of yourself. Thank you for joining us on the headliner, Craig. You, you know, my pleasure. Appreciate you having on, having me on and being part of it. And I value the friendship. Thank you very much. That is the headliner with Craig Button, the scouting director for TSN uh, in Canada, uh, brought to you by Miller Light, the original light beer with great taste and only 96 calories available for delivery. Once again, thanks to Craig Button.